Let's talk about your film Falling. Um, and and uh, you, you wrote the. Is this true? You wrote this on a on a plane flight, or you began to uh, write it, and then it's now coming to this beautiful film with you and Lance Henriksen, who's a dynamite actor that so many people have seen from uh, from Aliens or or the right stuff from back in the day. And Laura Linney, what a heck of a cast for your writing and directorial yeah. debut, Vigo. Yeah, I couldn't have had a better cast. I was very fortunate, very, very happy to have them. And uh, Lance Hendrickson gives an unforgettable performance. He's, he's astounding, really disturbing sometimes, no holds barred. He's, he's just terrific. I couldn't imagine anyone else doing it better. I think it's a performance that'll stand the test of time. It'll, it'll live long in memory. And uh, by the way, there is a nod to Guy Lafleur. I had to get permission from his family and from the NHL, but there's a diner scene look closely on the wall there's a picture of Gila Fleur huh. it takes place you. in the 70s it's great flashbacks. great Easter egg anyway I love but it. um yeah I was uh it was right after my mother died in 2015 and she had had dementia for several years like like Lance's character does in the movie and you know when someone dies you really love they're very present everything about them images of their you know my mom's face from different periods stories about her that I could remember and share with my brothers and that other people had their versions of the same stories of the funeral, which I thought was strange, how subjective memory is, you know. And then new stories from old people that I've known her in childhood that I had never met. And so I just wanted to remember that. I wanted to keep it alive. So I'm flying back, long plane flight overnight. And um, when I started writing down these things and I looked at what I was writing down, I thought, oh, this would be a good story. So I, I wrote it as a short story on this plane. I wrote the whole thing out, hmm. you know, fast. And um, and then I put it aside because I was, at the time, I was trying to get another screenplay made into a movie. I've been trying for 25 years to make a movie as a director from different screenplays. And so, and one day I thought, I should read that thing I wrote on the plane. It's probably not that great. It's like when you wake up in the middle of the night, if you have a notepad by your bed, you you scribble some line down or some idea you have, maybe. And then the next day you think, oh, that was a great idea. Let me see that. And it's usually not very great. It's like, oh, I wrote a story and I was drunk and it was brilliant. And then you read it. <laughs> it's like, no. <laughs> right. so and But this actually was good. It was it had a really good structure, the basic structure that the movie has. And all these different points of view, memories from the father's point of view, the kid's point of view. And it, it isn't, my mother's, the character that plays my mother in the story is, was kind of like my mother, but that's that's the only real thing. Right. One of the only, the few things that are, resemble our actual family. I mean, it's a fiction. I ended up feeling freer, didn't have to check with anybody in the family about facts, just making up a story, but based on the feelings I had for my mom and to some degree for my dad. And um, I looked at it and said, ah, it's very visual. I can see these memory shots and all these things that, that I'm describing in the story. Maybe it's a movie instead of a book, you know? And so I started, uh, to, I wrote that screenplay out. When the other movie fell apart, I started the process of trying to get this made. And it took me about four years. And I got Lance Henriksen on board, fortunately, early on. And, and he, to his credit, he stuck it out through thick and thin, you know, lost the money a couple times. And we finally pulled it together. You know, I called him one day. I said, hey, we're going to finally make the movie, which which was a lie. I didn't have the money. Yet, so <laughs> nice. I just decided I'm going to pretend like I'm making it and maybe other people, it'll be contagious. Wow. Join me. Which kind of happened. I just spent a little money. I just said to the cinematographer that I wanted to work with, um, someone I've worked with before, a guy from Denmark, really good um, artist. And uh, I said, bring the camera. Let's go find this farm. Let's go find these locations. Let's start filming because I want to have images for the memories from spring, summer, fall, you know, different seasons. Because it's really, nature is really important in the memories of the father and the son. To me. So we just started. And then eventually I did find a co-producer in Canada and another English guy, and we got it together. But even, even when we, I wanted to have seven weeks, which is not a lot, five days a week, you know, 35 days to shoot all that stuff in the winter with kids and their limited hours and, you know, short daylight hours and all that. It was, it was ambitious, but the, the producer said, all we can get is five weeks. I said, oh, man. Okay, well. So we figured it out. We got a really good team together. We prepared really well. And then we're, we're just a short ways from starting to shoot, and the producer comes over and he says, the co-producer says, uh, 
I'm sorry, but we only have enough for two weeks. I said, well, that's impossible. I can't shoot this in two weeks. He goes, yeah, but we'll, we'll get the rest probably eventually. It's, it's in the works. But right now you actually have enough money for two weeks. Do you want to wait till next year? I said, no, I've been waiting, you know. Four years. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> and four years on this one. So let's start. We got a great team. I couldn't think of a better cast. I mean, it's perfect from the littlest kid up to Lance Henderson. They're all perfect for their role. <laughs> Well, and who knows if I'll ever get this together. So let's just start. And go, okay, well, there's a risk. I said, that's all right. And so we got really into it. And it was going great. You know, and two weeks in, I'd completely forgotten about that conversation. Frankly, and, <laughs> oh, no. and, and he comes over to me one day. I'm standing outside um, between setups. And it was kind of cold and snowing. He says, hey, listen, can I talk to you for a minute? I go, sure. What's up? And he goes, um, well, you can finish. I go, finish. Yeah, you mean today? And he goes, no, no, I mean, you can finish the movie. I said, of course we're going to finish the movie. It's going great. And he goes, um, no, I mean, you have enough money to finish the movie. I said, oh, yeah, you have enough money for five weeks now. I said, oh, great, thank you. So that's how that went. <laughs> action. <laughs> and then you just call action and then you just go back to doing it. And it is, it's just so... <laughs> It's a beautiful movie, Vigo, and people with, with, with parents who, who suffer from dementia will recognize a, a lot of the uh, signposts mm-hmm. and, and, and moments that are, are heartbreaking and also, um, I guess, what's the word for it, uh, exasperating. And um, Well, yeah, and the problems that any, you know, there's hardly any family that doesn't have some communication problems, some disagreements, and this one, obviously, the son and the father, they butt heads a lot and have their whole lives together, probably. And it, that makes it even harder. Mm. You know, he's not an old man who wants any help from anybody. He's just a tough bastard, and he's he's really offensive to people. <laughs> you know, he just pushes people away. He's isolated, and he's bitter, and he seems to want it that way. And yet he's my dad, so I want to help him. And I realize to help him, I'm probably the only person he'll accept even minimal help from. Right. But but in order to help him, so he doesn't shut me off, I ha- I'm going to have to take. I, I say to him, I'm not. You know, you can insult me all you want. I want to help you, Dad. So <sighs> I'm not going to. I promise myself, I'm not going to get into another big blowout with you. Um, you know, have at it, but I'm not responding to that. So he tries, and most of the movie he manages to hang in there because he realizes if I want to help him, I'm going to have to take a lot of crap. And he does over and over again until it finally just blows up. And that it, it, it's it's a movie that I didn't think of it at the time when I started writing it, but it's become, unfortunately, in some ways, really timely because what's happening in a lot of families, not to mention in society as a whole in our country, obviously, is that we're at an all-time high as far as people not talking to each other and people not communicating well. Obviously, it's not just politicians. It's just people in the country, you know, and we have to sort of try to remember, just like this family and following does, let's think back at a time when we actually could talk and sort of listen to each other at least a little and work things out, you know, make some deals, Try to just just listen to people that you don't agree with. At least give give them a chance, and hopefully they'll give you a chance. We got to get back to that, you know. And so it, it feels very timely in that regard too. I think a lot of people know that feeling of why can't I talk to my friends anymore? Why can't I talk to some people in my family anymore right. over some you know political thing or something? It's just ridiculous. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.